Hello everybody. Um, so today we are going to focus on um, making something that's pretty cool for the fall and winter season. We are going to make bowl holders. Bowl holders. Microwavable bowl holders. Okay. So I'm going to show you. Um, oh, look at this one. I have a different pattern as well. So notice on this one, we have the same fabric that's inside as well as outside. So on top and bottom. But here I chose to do a pattern fabric on the top and then solid color on the bottom. So you can do it whatever way you want to, okay? But this is going to be our project for today. Oh, these are pretty cool because they're reversible as well. So it doesn't matter if you choose to do a solid color on the bottom, reversible, okay? So that's what we're going to work on today. So let's get started and I will tell you what you're going to need. You are going to need microwavable fabric microwavable this is wrap and zap so wrap and zap it's used for you know potato warmers we're going to use it for bowl holders but so get yourself some of this um, if you don't want to buy it packaged by the time you use a coupon for it at the store if you get it from the Joanne's or Hobby Lobby you can get this for about five dollars and this right here, this packet can do um, probably, it can do about six. Um, so it's a yard, but it can do six bowl holders that are a size 10 by 10, which is what we're going to do today. Okay. So the other things that you're going to need, you are going to need, get your pins. I have a marking tool. If you do not have a marking tool, that's fine. Get yourself um, either some chalk or um, a marking pencil that you can mark with. Okay. I have some snippers. You're going to need pattern fabric for your top. Okay. I'm going to use a solid color bottom for this fabric. So you need pattern piece, one piece of um, pattern. And then for the bottom side, like here, I use a solid color. So just for the video, so that you're not looking at the same type of pattern, I'm going to use a solid color, but you can use whatever you would like. Okay. And then you're going to need um, two pieces of the wrap and zap, but I want to tell you a little secret. Okay. This fabric right here. Okay. You can use the wrap and zap that's in the pack that I just showed you, or... 100% warm batting, warm and natural batting. That's what this is. I like either one, so um, it doesn't matter. This is microwavable as well, but it also holds um, good for heating stuff. But it must be 100% cotton. The material that you're planning on using for your project this must also be 100% cotton, no polyester because you're putting it into the microwave. Um, if you do not intend to put it into the microwave, um, then you can go ahead and use fabric that combines um, polyester because if you're just microwaving something and then have this right by the microwave to put your bowl in when you when you take it out the microwave to hold it as you sit down at your sofa or you know at your chair, that's fine, you know, if you want to use fabric that contains polyester. But if you're going to microwave it, you need 100% cotton. That includes your thread. On your thread, your thread will say 100% cotton. A lot of the fabrics say 100% polyester. Get 100% cotton. Okay, so let's get started. Um, your squares need to be um, for your outer fabric your um, well, top fabric, bottom fabric, as well as your batting for the microwavable material. They are 10 by 10. So I'll just show you it's a perfect square. So 10 by 10, okay, 10 across, 10. That's it, that's pretty simple. If you want a larger bowl, the next size that I recommend would be a 12 by 12 or 14 by 14, you can decide, okay? But these are standard um, soup bowls, okay? And this is a 10 by 10. 
Okay, so let's get started. So take an out, take one of your, take a top layer, and also take one of the batting, pe the batting pieces, put the other to the side for right now. Okay, what you're going to do, you're going to put your fabric right on top of each other. Okay, so put your top fabric right on top of one piece of the warm and natural batting or the wrap and zap, whatever you choose. Okay, go ahead and get a ruler. You can use a regular 12 inch ruler for this, that's fine. Okay, so get a ruler. We're going to make a diagonal line, a diagonal marking on this fabric. What we want to do is we want to create a crisscross. Okay. And the reason we're creating this crisscross is because when this gets washed, it's going to help hold the batting in place. So we're going to be sewing from one part um, of the square to the other part. We're creating a crisscross right now. Okay, so what we're going to do, you can use either a piece of chalk um, or you can use um, a marking pencil that you have. I'm going to use this right here. What I'm going to do from corner to corner, I am marking, I'm marking the fabric and it's basically creating a line so that I know I'm going to sew a straight line. Okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this material around and I'm creating another diagonal line, corner to corner. Okay, corner to corner. This is pretty cool and I think it was like three or four dollars. Um, it was really cheap, but um, I don't like to put markings on outer fabric when I sew. And as you can see, the lines are still there. So it shows me where I'm going to sew, okay? Pin your material in place, okay? This is so that um, it doesn't shift. It helps um, for when you're sewing um, so that the material doesn't shift. Okay, so now we're going to go underneath the machine. We're gonna sew from corner all the way down to the other corner. And then we're going to do the same thing from this corner all the way across so that we sew that X, okay? And I am going to sew on stitch length of 3.0. Again, remember, we don't like the 2.5. They're too skinny and it's really hard to get out if you make a mistake. Remember to backstitch. Always backstitch on your project. I'm sewing right across that line that I marked. And I'm back stitching. I don't go to the all the way to the end until I've back stitched. Okay, so you see this so far? It's just diagonal, diagonal line, that's all. I'm going to do the same thing for the opposite corners, okay? And go slower if you feel you need to. I've done tons of these already. So I'm just zooming through with my machine, but go slow, take your time if you need to, um, in order to get that line straight. Okay, go ahead and remove your pins. And we're going to do the same thing to your other um, fabrics for right now. So go ahead and grab that other fabric, whatever you choose um, for the bottom part of your fabric. Again, um, I'm using a solid color just so you can see the difference. Okay, so you want um, pretty side facing up, pretty side of your fabric facing up. Okay, and again, all I'm doing, I'm putting it right on top 
of um, the batting, okay? I'm going to mark this as I talk to you. Um, you can choose to pre-wash your fabric, okay? Um, Pre-washing it prevents it from shrinking, okay? But if you do not pre-wash it, that's fine as well. Just make sure that you wash it in cold water and leave it to dry flat. Don't dry it in the machine because um, it, a little bit, it will shrink a little bit. But then again, all cotton shrinks, right? So, all right, so as you can see, I've done the same thing that I did before. I'm going to pin. Guys, this is why I get notches in my table because I always pin like this. But I've been using these tables for years and I love them. They're Ikea tables. I have a few of them in my room here. I don't mind if they get marked up. I do have mats. <laughs> I just don't use them. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sew those lines. Okay. And again, this is going to hold the material in place. And it's going to make it look good. <laughs> I don't know if any of you know about um, quilting, but quilters, um, they actually do the same thing with their blankets um, or wall hangings because there's so much batting inside and it helps it from shifting. But you can do pretty cool squiggly lines on to make designs on those. serves different purposes, not just aesthetically pleasing, but um, a functional purpose as well. Make sure you use a coordinating fabric when you are, when you're sewing, because you will see it. I'm choosing my colors because I want you to be able to see them. Okay, so you should have two pieces that has the X's on them, okay? So this is where it's going to start to get a little bit confusing. Don't get scared, okay? Um, what we are going to do right now, take one piece, set one aside, take one piece, and what we're going to do, you're going to fold it in half, okay? So fold it in half, make sure that your lines meet up with each other. You see this? So your lines meet up with each other, okay? If you sewed a straight line, they should meet up with each other, okay? That's all. What I like to do, I just like to stick something inside and make sure that the fabric is not bulging. And it's not, okay. Here's what you need to do now, get a ruler. Now for the 10 by 10 inch ball that I told you that we're going to make, um, what we're creating right now, we are going to create these things right here, which creates um, a little pocket like the depth, okay, for your bowl to actually sit in, okay? That's what gives it the shape. So right now what we're going to do, we are going to create these. They're called darts if you know about sewing clothes or if you start sewing clothes. That's what we're going to do. And we want to create four of them, okay, to go around the bowl so that when the bowl sits inside, it's almost like it's in a pocket, okay? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. You're going to put your ruler so that your ruler is lined up with the edge of the fabric okay at the fold okay then you should have it right at the edge here we want to mark I'm sliding over a tiny bit we want to mark one inch you see that blue okay 
All right, so hopefully you can see that blue. So we wanna mark one inch over from the fold, okay? And we wanna mark two inches down. So here I'm marking two inches here, okay? So we have one inch over from the fold and two inches down, okay? Now what we wanna do is we wanna create just a straight line, a diagonal line. Okay, this is actually a line that we're going to sew on. Okay, let's do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so just like before, I'm um, putting my ruler at the edge. Okay, so you can see that. I'm going to mark one inch. Okay, one inch down. And then I'm going to mark two inches, you see this? Two inches on the fold. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other side where I am going to connect those lines, which will be the dart. Okay? Okay. So now, go ahead and pin your fabric so that it holds together when you are sewing. You don't want it to shift. Okay. And now what you're going to do, you're going to sew. Start at the folded part. It makes it a lot easier, okay, to go underneath your, um, underneath your foot. So start at the folded part. Sew right down on the line. Back stitch at both points. You're going to do the same thing for um, the left side that you do for the right side, okay? So down. Okay. Starting on that on that tip, I back stitched and I'm back stitching again. Okay, coming out. So it should look like this. Okay, let's do the same thing to the other side. Okay. Same thing to the other side. I'm going to back stitch. So you should have something that looks like this. We've created basically a triangle. And now, what we're going to do, we are going to cut these off right here. Cut these off because this here, you don't wanna leave the part, you don't wanna leave this on because it will create bulkiness inside of here. Okay, so we're gonna cut them off of both sides we don't need that part. We don't need those corners. Okay, I'm removing my pins. Okay, now here's what we need to do. It looks like this right now. What you need to do is open this up. Let me just cut these. And cut the strands, they bother me. So open this up. You can see we have the beginning of a bowl. We have the beginning. It can already stand up a little bit by itself, but we need to help it on this side, okay? So we're basically going to create the same thing that we just did. We wanna do that for this side as well. So you see that? So that it starts to take shape, okay? So what we're going to do, it was originally like this, remember? So we're opening, and now what we're going to do is take the piece that we just cut that dart, let's fold it right across. Now we're just folding it the opposite way. That's all, you're folding your material the opposite way. Make sure those um, sewing, those lines that we sewed, the diagonal lines, make sure they line up again, okay? Okay, that lines up, it's nice and flat. Go ahead and pin those pieces together to hold them in place for you. You're gonna be so proud of yourself when you're done with this project. It's a little harder than little zipper pouches, but you can do this. These are still straight lines, 
okay? You should have a little divot there. Let's do the same exact thing we did on the other side. We're going to mark this. We want um, two inches on the fold and we want one inch across this way. Okay. All right, and let's mark it. Same thing. Okay, now I'm doing the same thing on the other side because we want four, we want four darts. Marking is going to be important so that you make, oh, haha, -ha, so that you make sure you get the same, so that everything is even. I'm gonna have to change my change my tool okay so go ahead and sew down those lines just like you did um, on the opposite side I'm starting off in the corner sewing the other side I wanted to sew from the corner from you for you guys, but mm. when you sew projects like this that has flannel or batting, make sure that you open up your bobbin case and dust inside of there because um, a lot of the lint builds up inside of there. That's why you get these little brushes with your sewing machine. So, and after you make a few of these, um, or if you're sewing flannel, you definitely want to make sure that you are um, changing your bobbin case. Right. Okay, so now you have four completed darts. Okay, so now your ball holder should basically be able to stand up. Okay, but now what we have to do is we have to create the bottom part of the, we have to create the bottom part of this. So grab that other piece that you have, the part that has the other fabric, okay, that already has the X on it, fold it in half. You're going to do the same exact thing that you did to the other, to the top part. Okay, I'm just making sure that my X's are lining up. Gonna mark again. Okay. Going one inch and again two inches, creating that line. Raw. Okay. And now I'm going to do the same thing. a pen if you want to this is not being seen on the actual project when it's done oh go ahead and pin <laughs> I don't pin I'm just pinning for you guys <laughs> so I almost forgot and so okay that didn't okay go ahead and sew One other important thing, um, besides making sure that you um, dust inside of your bobbin case when you start making these or sewing with flannel, uh, make sure you're using either universal needles or, um, because there are different types of needles, uh, universal needles, I love them. They actually go through several layers of material with no problem at all um, or you can use the ones that are designed for well you know what check with your machine it depends if you have singer versus a brother or um, genome depends on what kind you have removing those pins again and I'm going to I'm just cutting the stragglies we don't like those 
I'm going to open it up the same way I did before. We are going to connect in the opposite direction. Okay. Okay, all even, looking good, I'm satisfied. Okay, you're almost done with the project, you're almost done. The more you make these, the faster you'll be. So, and it's with anything, you just have to practice. But these are so good as gifts for around the holidays, or if you're going to a housewarming party, you can just actually put in a bowl of soup or um, get some wooden get some wooden spoons to add, you know, to accompany them. Um, or just put them in a gift bag, you know, yourself. You don't have to add anything. But I've seen people that actually um, have purchased them and, you know, went along with the idea to purchase soup packs to add. So mark it up. And go ahead and sew. The best thing about these, it's if you're making them for children, you can put their favorite characters on them. Um, you can also, you know, just think about what the person likes that you're going to, you know, be making it for. Or try to match it with the kitchen. So... You know, it makes it a very personalized gift. There's tons of fabric in the stores for you to choose from. If your little person loves, um, I don't know, um, Superman or um, Paw Patrol, um, make, their, make them a bowl holder out of that material. Or if they like unicorns or, you know, dogs, it doesn't matter. If you want some for your kitchen that look nice, then of course you choose the appropriate fabric, whether it's for Christmas or harvest. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we have the same thing that we have for the other one. Our bowl can actually sit right inside of it. Okay, you see that? All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to put these together. You have the two of these. And now what we're going to do push one so that it's inside out okay we want pretty side to touch pretty side stick it in there okay so you should be looking at the wrap and zap or the warm and natural batting whichever one you chose you should be looking at that on your outer sides okay that's what you should be looking at okay Line up those, you see those lines right there? You see the lines you sewed, the diagonal ones? Line them up, corner to corner, okay? Pin, okay? Tuck it down in there, tuck the pocket down in there. Not a pocket, but just make sure it's all the way down. And pin, don't pin up at the top because we're going to be sewing around, okay? So pin someplace a little further down. Creating. This is actually now inside out. If we want it to, just so that you can see, um, you should be able to imagine it already and see it as your bowl holder already. But just in case you can't, that's pretty much, it's just that it's inside out, okay? We always sew inside out because we love having things look pretty. So your lines should all be lined up. Your seams here, that should be together. They should be together, okay? Your, um, your um, sewn diagonal lines should be together at the top. Don't worry about the bottom. They'll shift naturally once you flip it inside out, okay? So now what we're going to do, we need to create this line on top. We need to sew all around the top to make the pretty stitching, okay? Well, this is top stitching, but what we're going to do is we're going to close this up, okay? And we're going to sew all the way around, all the way around, okay? I want you to pin 
I'm going to make an opening with pins just so that you would see here. I want you to keep an opening. You need to be able to turn it inside out. So move this over just a little bit. Pick one side, okay? And this is going to be the pocket you use. Three fingers is good enough, okay? This is going to be the pocket that you do not sew because you need to be able to turn it inside out, okay? So start wherever the second pin is so all the way around, all the way around the top until you get back to this pin, okay? All right, here we go. Oh, look at this. So you can push this part, push your project in, push the bowl part in so that it hugs the arm of your sewing machine. I love that, it's gonna help you out, okay? So push it on so that it sits there, okay? All right, remember to backstitch. Stay away from the from the very, very edge on your sewing machine. Line up your fabric with the second guide marker here, okay? So we don't want a full half inch, um, but what we wanna do is line it up with your second guide marker there, okay? That's a good distance. When you get to the corners where the darts are, it's gonna seem a little tough, go right over them. Stop right at the dart, lift your needle foot, lift your needle, um, I'm sorry, lift the lever so that you can pivot and turn, I taught you that in another video, okay? Then put it back down, continue sewing. I'm getting to the end of the corner. I'm going to backstitch a little bit. I'm going to leave my needle down inside of there. And what I'm going to do is lift that lever again. I'm turning my project and I'm going to sew again. That's pivoting. I'm getting to a dart. I just like to backstitch to force it over the hump. Left thing turning. Keep going all the way around. If you actually put your, put the bowl holder on the arm, it will turn with you so that you don't have to struggle. Take your time. Ever so often, just check and make sure that your fabrics are still meeting up, that your raw edges are still together, okay? Sometimes they might wanna shift when you're sewing, so just make sure that they're still together. I'm almost to my last corner. I'm just making sure that my triangles, I mean, um, that my lines are still meeting up together. When you get back around that final, that final corner, make sure you take out, well, you can actually stop right before the pin. I didn't realize I naturally just removed my pin because I do, okay? But um, don't sew past the second pin that's there, okay? Okay, you can remove the extra pin now. Let's go ahead on the outside, I want you to clip those corners. Do not clip your stitching line. Don't clip the stitching line, okay? You see this? Clip on the outside. This is going to reduce the bulk when you actually flip it. Okay. Okay, remove your pins. You're almost done, almost done. Okay, 
you can clip any extras that might be any extra threads that might be bothering you okay stick let's go here open this up you have four layers you want to open it up so you have um, the view of your top and bottom layer okay stick your two fingers inside stick it in there we want to turn this inside out the easiest way is to stick those two fingers in and at the opposite corner I go for this corner all the time so stick your fingers here grab the corner grab that corner with your thumb and index finger and look you see that I'm just pulling it through you see that pull and now I'm pushing the rest of this down okay that's all it's that's very simple use your finger your index finger um, and I have my middle finger I'm going inside and what I'm doing is I'm going to poke my corners out which this is why we clip the corners um, when you do zipper pouches or anything with um, with corners a good thing to do is to make sure you clip those um, edges before you turn your item right side out all right so this is also where if you've seen one of my other videos if you have a chopstick it's the perfect way to um, get those corners um, to get those corners uh, really really I'll get it for you. it's the perfect way to get those corners um, just like this look pointy that's the word I was looking for pointy okay all right let's close this up now Here's the trick. I've seen some peep, some bowl holders that people make, and I'm going to tell you that they all they look great. But the difference when I make mine, I love to iron before I top stitch. It just makes it look so good, so clean. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold over this portion right here. See that? We're just going to fold over. That's the portion that we left open. It's gonna naturally fold in because the thickness, because of the thickness. Go ahead and get your iron, iron it down, flatten it out. The heat will help flatten it. And then sew around, I mean not sew around, but flatten out your edges for each side. Okay? This is gonna to prove to be uh, a lifesaver when you're when you're trying to sew through multiple layers. Okay, the heat flattens the bulk. Okay. All right, I'm almost done. Now, what we want to do now at this point Oh, I didn't do this one. <laughs> I started at my opening and now I'm back at the beginning. Okay, so now I can even feel the difference. You can feel the difference in the bulk. Now what we want to do is we want to make this outside look really nice and pretty. It was bulky before, but what we want to do is we want to have it look really nice and finished off. Okay, so we're going to sew around the top about an eighth of an inch all the way around just see this can you see that um can you see that it's like about an eighth of an inch that distance okay you want to make sure that you're sewing at 3.0 because the thickness of this if you have it at 3.0 you're stitching it's going to help it go easily in and out of your fabric where's my opening Oh, there it is. Start at your opening, okay? And again, fit it on there. Okay, starting at my opening, and I'm going all the way around. One eighth of an inch is the same thing as using the first guide marker. The first one that's closest. So here's your hole. Here's your guide marker that your thread normally slips through. This first one right there, line up your material with that right there. Perfect. The edge of my material, the edge of my fabric is lined up right underneath that. That's how I know I'm going to get an even, a really nice straight and even top stitching line all the way around. 
Okay. I'm getting to the end. Make sure you slow down and we're gonna pivot, go around. This is the last part of this project. My asparagus fabric, my veggie fabric, that's a great one for the bowl holder. It's fun for your soup. Maybe for like chicken soup or veggie soup. Bowl holders have become very popular in the last two years. The great thing about ironing um, these down before you start is that the fabric stays in place. It doesn't even move when you're sewing. No shifting. side the very very last portion when you get back down to the bottom make sure you go over meet the stitch that you did first or go over it just in case you didn't back stitch and I'm going right over that first stitch even though I did back stitch and we are done Okay, cut off those stragglies. You should be proud of yourself because, okay, take a look at the stitching. You see that? You see that? That's how close it is. I use that first guide marker um, that's right um, on the foot. And I get the perfect line, the same distance from the edge of my seam all the time, okay? And now we have a bowl holder. Look at that. That's all for now, everyone. So go ahead and if you have questions or comments, um, leave them down below and let me know if there's something that you would like me to make. But um, yeah, that's it. So go ahead. You can put this in the microwave and heat up. Oh, heat it up on like two to three increments in small increments or put your bowl in the microwave and then just put it inside after to give to your little one. Okay, there you go. Bye guys. See you on the next video.